Hello makers, and welcome to Sheer Stitchery. I'm Katherine Harris, and if you're new here, I do sewing and DIY tutorials each week. So don't forget to subscribe down below and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a beat. This week, I wanted to share with you how you can copy one of your favorite t-shirt patterns or any ready to wear garment and create your own pattern to wear. So let's get to drafting and sewing. So we're going to start by drafting the body of our t-shirt. So to do that, you want to make sure you get out any wrinkles. So you might want to give it a light pressing beforehand. I didn't do that in this case, and it still turned out fine. And you want to fold your t-shirt exactly in half lengthwise because we want to have a pattern that is the same going down the right and left side. So once you have your T folded completely in half, you're going to want to secure it to the surface that you are working on. And I've actually got mine on top of the pattern paper that I am using. And you can use pins and foam core underneath your pattern paper if you're struggling with this. And you can actually pin your t-shirt in place. Now I find that a t-shirt is pretty forgiving with the pattern measurements. So pattern weights were all that I needed for me to be successful in copying this t-shirt that I have. Now I'm just going in and I'm really concentrating on putting the weight around where the seam that I'm going to be tracing is located. So I'm going to find the seams and I'm just going to mark the edges of where it ends and then come and follow that seam all the way up to where the other seam is. Now don't worry about seam allowances at this point. So once we have that, we're going to fold it back exactly in half, and then we are going to mark that halfway mark, and then we're going to draw the hemline. And once that is done, we're going to go up and draw the fold line here, going right to the top. And then I'm making a little notch at the top of the neckline in the back and the top of the neckline in the front. So the next step that we are going to do is we are going to be tracing the arm side. So for this, what we are going to do is you can either come in and you can prick it with a pin going in and following that arm side line. And you can actually see that through the pattern paper. I'm actually using a tracing wheel and I find that works quite well. If you don't have either of these things, you could still try to eyeball it, but you're not going to get quite the right shape if you try to kind of pull it back. And so then what I'm doing here is I'm just following those little pin pricks that were made in the paper and I don't have foam core underneath. I've got a hard surface underneath and I was still able to see it quite fine. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw the shoulder seam that comes up. And lastly, we're going to draw the curve of the back neckline and the front neckline. So I've got the back neckline, but with the front, we have to fold that fabric away so that we can actually access where that is. So I'm actually positioning my pattern weights to line up right along where that seam hits. And when you trace this, you want to trace it going along the seam. So you don't want to include the band in any of these measurements. And I used my tracing wheel just because it's a bit easier to go through on the curves. And then I am drawing that curve up. And then we can take away our pattern weights or our pins, whatever we are using, as well as our T for now. And then we are going to come in and fix the pattern. So right here, we're going to refine that body pattern. So I'm just using a quilting ruler to make sure that I have a completely straight and parallel line to my hem because we want to make sure that it is even when we flip this on the fold. So once I have trued that up, then we've got our side seam, which we can leave as is. Then you're going to use a French curve ruler to true up the arm side as well as the neck bands here. And I'm just trying to figure out which French curve will work best. And I think the smaller one will work a little bit better in this case. So you're just going to find that right angle and you are going to fix that. Now, if you don't have a French curve, that is okay. Just kind of eyeball it to make sure everything looks crisp and clean. 
And then you're going to come in with your regular straight ruler and you're going to create a straight line here for the shoulder seam. And then I am taking the long edge of my French ruler or French curve and fixing up the neckline here. And so you notice I have a B and an F, one for the back, one for the front, just so I know. Next, I am just drawing in these markings to show that it is going on the fold. Now we need to add in our seam allowances. So in this instance, I decided to do three quarters of an inch seam allowances, and I'm going to draw this in a red marker just so you can see it a little bit better. And I'm just coming in with my ruler around the three quarter of an inch mark. And because it is a knit pattern, you could go in with a quarter of an inch seam allowance, then you are not going to have to cut anything off when you take it off to the serger and are finishing those hems. And so I'm just going in here along this curve as well. And I actually like to write in what my seam allowances are so that when I come back to the pattern and I'm stitching it again, I can remember what my seam allowances are going to be. And I'm not going to mess that up. And the last thing that we are going to do is we're going to check the seam allowance for the hem on the ready to wear tee that we have. And this one here is a one inch hem here. So I am just going to add one inch to the bottom of our pattern here. And that will be our one inch hem. And next we, I'm just writing the pattern that it's the front and the back. Now we're going to draft the sleeves. Now you can draft the sleeves a couple of different ways. What I found to be the easiest, especially if you have pattern paper that is a bit transparent, is you can actually draw that arm side and a little bit of the shoulder seam onto your pattern piece so that you have the right measurements to go in and trace that sleeve because that is going to be what we would be tracing anyway and it just saves you a bit of a step. And the next thing that I am going to do is I'm going to match up the shoulder seam and the bottom of the sleeve. And then I'm going to place my pattern weights right along that seam. And remember, we're not placing it on the seam with the seam allowance. It's the seam without the seam allowance. Then I'm going to place pins or pattern weights along the sleeve here. And then we are just going to copy this. Now, if you have a sleeve that isn't the same in the front and the back, you're going to have to mark where that fold is on your fabric and then flip it over. In this case, we can transfer the one side and then just create a duplicate version of that sleeve because it's exactly the same. And you can see already as I'm drafting this, that this doesn't look like your typical sleeve. So I am just marking this in because I want to get the measurements of how wide that sleeve opening is and how long that curve along the arm side is. So those are the most important measurements right now. And then I'm just going to connect where that shoulder seam comes out over to where I had drawn our area for how wide the sleeve opening is going to be. So I'm just connecting those together. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this paper over after I have drawn in my seam allowances and create a duplicate of that sleeve. So to create those seam allowances, I'm doing the three quarters of an inch along the main seams. And then I am doing a half an inch along the sleeve seam. And if you want, you could do a full one inch along the sleeve seam for the hem to match your bottom hem, but I seem to like the half inch version here. And then you're just going to connect that seam allowance line and obviously no seam allowances along where you have the fold. So the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to fold this in half because we want to refine the sleeve. So I folded it in half and then cut it out so it's exactly the same. Now this is kind of a lumpy bumpy sleeve. A sleeve should be in the shape of what in math class we would call a bell curve. So you can see that I am just measuring around here and I've got nine inches and I've actually already measured this template sleeve that I have and that's also nine inches. So the most important measurement is the depth of how long the sleeve is as well as how long that curve is. So we are just changing the shape of that curve so that it fits nicely 
into our arm size. So it's still that, well, I guess it's 18 inches in total, but nine inches on the half version of that to create that sleeve. And then I am just coming in and squaring everything up, making sure that it is all even. And I have that two inch length on my sleeve, which is what was from my pattern. And I've decided to add on an extra half an inch seam allowance so that I have a full one inch hem on my sleeve to match the hem on my bottom. It's just going to be a little bit more easy to remember that. Next, we are going to do the neckband. So we're going to measure how long our front and our back neck openings are. So in this case, I have 6.5 inches in my front and 4.5 inches for the back. So we are going to add those two together to give us 11 inches. And then we need to reduce this by a fifth simply because the neckband will never sit right if it's the exact same length as the opening. You want it to be about one fifth smaller so that it lies nicely. And then we are going to double that measurement so that 8.8 .8 inches we're going to multiply by two and we are going to draw out the neckband. And then now we need to determine how wide that neckband is going to be. So in this instance, it is 0.75 inches or three quarters of an inch, meaning I need to make my neckband 1.5 inches wide. And that is finished. So that's not including those seam allowances on the neckband here. And we only need to have one neckband, so it's not cut double, but let's add those seam allowances in. So we need to add the seam allowances on either side as well as on the bottom. And so I just decided to add the seam allowance strictly to the bottom. I didn't need to add it to the top because this is a rectangle. So I added those seam allowances in and now we have our neck band. And you can see that there's a bit of that overhang and that's where that seam allowance overhang is. And I'm just coming back and measuring that. Next, we're going to get to sewing. So we're going to sew the shoulder seams with right sides together, joining the front and the back bodice pieces of our t-shirt. So because it's a knit fabric, I like to use clips as opposed to pins, but ballpoint pins will also work nicely as well. So once we have that pinned in place, we are going to serge the top. And if you don't have a serger, you can go ahead and use a stretch stitch to sew it on a regular sewing machine. Next, we're going to set in the sleeves. So in order to do this, we need to find out where the center of our sleeve is. And I am using scissors to create a notch. You could also use a water soluble marker to create that notch. And I'm matching that up with the seam and I'm pointing my seams towards the back of the bodice. Then I'm going to pin the side seams along the edges and then once that is pinned in place, then I'm going to distribute those clips in between the center and end portions of the sleeve. Then we can pop on over to our serger or sewing machine and we are going to stitch going all the way down our sleeve. Now we're going to sew the side seams together. So you're going to place your T with right sides together. And then the first place I like to match up is that seam where we have the sleeve so that we're ensuring that that matches up. And so I'm just going to pin that in place and then pin the end of the sleeve and then pin the bottom down by where the hem goes. And then we can distribute the clips in between where we had pinned and serge that seam on both sides. Now we're going to sew the neckband together. So you're going to place the neckband right sides together and stitch along the short end to create a long skinny tube. Then you're going to fold the neckband with wrong sides together to create a band. And what I'm doing here is I'm actually quartering it. So I'm using the back seam as one of my markings, and then I am clipping in place where the center of that is. And then once I've joined those two center pieces together, I'm going to find out where those quarter marks are, and I'm going to snip that and place a little clip there because we are holding two layers together. We wanna to make sure that it comes together nicely. You could also use a marker for this as well, but I find that the clips work much quicker. So now that that's quartered, we need to quarter our neckband opening. So with that, we are going to find our center front and our center back. 
So by that, we're matching the shoulder seams and we're marking the center front and the center back of our T. And then you need to find the quarter marks on that. So you're going to match up the notches on the center front and center back and create a little notch for those quarter marks. Now, bear in mind, it does not match up with those shoulder seams. Those are not going to be the quartered and your neckband's going to look all wonky and kind of do some gathering if you do that because it's not even. Then with right sides together, you're going to pin the neckband in place, matching the direction of the raw edges of your fabric. And you're just going to match up all of the quarter seams first. So where those notches are that you have quartered that neckband, that's where you're going to pin them first. And I'm just going in and placing all four of those pins in place to hold all three layers of fabric together. Now, the next thing that you can do is you can either pop on over to your sewing machine or serger and stitch that in place, making sure to stretch just the neckband, not the T itself as you sew, or you can do what I'm doing here and I'm actually adding in some extra clips and I'm stretching it between each clip and finding that center point, pinching it and adding the clip in there. Now, if you serge it, you need to hide those serger tails. You can't just clip them off. So you're going to thread a darning needle and then you're going to push the thread through the seam. And then now you can clip it off because it is hidden in the seam allowance and it won't come unraveled. And once that is done, you can top stitch it or just leave it as it is. Now we're going to sew the sleeve hems. So we're going to fold our sleeve in and whatever seam allowance that you had chosen to do, mine was one inch in this case, you're going to measure that out and you're going to place some clips along here. And we're just going to do that around the perimeter of the sleeve. And then you're going to head over to your cover stitch machine, use a twin needle. You could also use a stretch stitch or a zigzag on a regular sewing machine and top stitch those hems in place for your sleeves. And I did mine on my cover stitch, and this is what it looks like. You really wanna make sure it's a stretch stitch so that it stretches with you. Now we're going to stitch the bottom hem. So we're going to do the exact same thing that we had done with our sleeves. I've got my one inch hem here, and I am just going to clip that in place. And we're going to clip all the way around and then pop on over to our machine and top stitch that in place. And once it's done, it should look a little something like this. And believe it or not, your tea is all done. And there you have it. We are all done. And it's super quick, especially if you're making a t-shirt. But this method could also be translated to other items like skirts or sweatshirts or anything else that you'd want to create your own pattern from an existing garment from. Now, I wanted to also show you what would happen if by accident you had decided to cut out two fronts as opposed to a front and a back, which happened, I think I was sewing a little too late. And actually the shirt I am wearing is actually one where I cut two fronts and it still turned out absolutely lovely. And it's just a little bit more slouchy because the back is scooped out. But the great thing is, if you're putting this on and you're super tired, you don't have to even think about what is the front or the back of the garment because they're both the same. So let me know in the comments down below if you enjoyed these tutorials on how to draft your own garments. And if I get enough comments and likes, then I'll know that that's something you're interested in and I'll make more videos like this. Until next time, makers, let's get our so inspiration on. Bum, bum, ba, da, bum.